Okay, so before we begin the second session, I just want to share this document with you. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, this one just describes how big men um, should be, you know, uh, performed. So as you can see, okay, let's see that uh, this is a left arm. The person is, uh, you know, showing the kamae. And then when you sing up, this moment, right? So now you're gonna start singing up. So when you see here, um, you can see that the shoulder is rotating about 90 degree. That's what you see, right? From the kamae position, when you sing up, it's about 90 degree. Now, from here, this is not the peak. So the person is gonna go even a little bit more. At this point, uh, after you move the shoulders about 90 degree, your elbow also bend, uh, rotate up about, I would say like 20 degree or maybe about 30 degree. Okay, so both shoulders and the uh, um, uh, elbows, you know, are rotating. Now, when you see this, um, your wrist fingers, basically no rotation. Then you should not use your wrist to make the rotation and the fingers too, they should just uh, remain unmoved. Okay, so no movements here. Now, however, the shina itself, if you're holding the correct grip, there should be a little bit space between your thumb and index finger. So that's why, as you can see, the shinai should be able to rotate about just a tiny bit. It's not that much, but I would say about five, 10 degree. Okay? So this is how you swing up, right? Start from the shoulders, elbow is gonna uh, rotate too. And the shinai, because of the correct grip, can rotate by itself. Okay? That's how it goes, right? So this is how you swing up, big man, once again. See the big man, your left hand is in front of your forehead, okay? Then the tip shouldn't be lower than your hands, right? Now, when you swing up, yeah, first, your shoulder is gonna uh, um, start dropping. So over here, because you're striking the man, you're not gonna go all the way down. Shoulder is gonna rotate down about, I would say 20, 30 degree, as you can see uh, in the drawing. And then next, elbow. Now, elbows is actually rotating now, in this case, down, but uh, much more than, you know, when you swing up. It's gonna go probably about 40, 50 degree, right? And then when you strike now, here, your wrist should actually rotate down about 20 degree. Okay, now you're using the wrist, you know, when you strike down, at the moment when you strike, okay? Yeah. And then, Okay, so when you swing down over here, it's not only the wrist, but uh, your fingers. So as you can see in the drawing or the picture, uh, the right finger, yeah, you can see the little finger and the ring finger are used to pull the shinai um, like towards you. And uh, the sun, is actually pushing the shinai forward. So shinai itself is gonna be pushed forward. When you see the left fingers, or the, uh, um, the little finger and the ring finger on the left, left hand, uh, you are supposed to pull. So this is why your wrist can rotate down. And once again, as you can see at the above drawing, the shinai should again rotate down about five, 10 degrees. Okay, makes sense? Yeah. So if you kind of look, you know, how each part should move, this could be a good, um, you know, good thing for you to review how you're doing, okay? But I think the key points here, when you look at it, um, basically when you swing up, it is mainly your shoulders. You know, that's the shoulder or actually including the shoulder, the back muscle, okay? Uh, these are the muscle that you're using to raise your shinai up. Your elbow is gonna move and, you know, 
uh, the shina is going to load it by itself too, but it's because, you know, the shoulder is making this big motion. That's why elbow is going to uh, rotate up naturally, and the shinai is going to move naturally as well because of the momentum. That's how I want you to um, understand the motion. Instead, when you uh, swing down, what's happening is first important thing is you're going to use the left, left hand. And it is like as if you are using the left hand and dropping it. Right? That's the first motion you're going to do. And at the same time, it's, the emphasis here is not really the power, but more acceleration. So you want to accelerate, the, especially the, uh, the, uh, the speed on the tip of the shinai. Okay? So use the gravity, use the weight of the shinai. Yeah? They are your friends. So you can use it instead of trying to you know, force yourself, yeah? especially using your right hand and the force yourself, strike down. That's not the correct way to do it. Okay? Emphasis is once again on your acceleration. Yeah? So this is how the big man should move, uh, should be performed. Now, when you go to the uh, small man, yeah, there are basically, I think, two types. You know, uh, so as I've been saying, when you do the small man, the motion is going to be small. Now, when you swing up, as you can see, um, the shoulders, now they're going to move probably about 60 degrees, yeah? as you can see. Elbows, when you see the type one, um, elbow is going to rotate, okay, so about 20, 30. Or if you see the type two, elbows, no, move, no movement. So they don't have to uh, be rotated. Yeah. So both cases uh, could exist. Okay. Once again, wrist, fingers, no movements. But the shinai should move uh, about 5, 10 degrees, if you, have, you can call it a correct grip. Yeah. When you swing down, yeah, same thing as a big man. But shoulders over here, you do not have to move. Rotate down the shoulders anymore. Elbows, uh, it's gonna go in case of a type one, probably about 40, 50 degree. Yeah? Same as a big man. Or if you go with a type two, it's gonna move just about 20. The wrist, fingers, the motion should be exactly the same as when you do the big man. Does this make sense? So I will share this document with you. And I want you to, you know, think about it. You know, and try to just understand the motions, and then when you do the subri, you know, try to realize it. Okay. So once again, when you do the big one here, right? Yeah, the shoulders are the, the one, especially left one, right? left shoulder. This motion, because you are making the big motion like this here. That's why elbows is gonna, you know, rotate up by itself, right? It's because of the momentum you created using your back muscle and shoulders, okay? Then the shinai. If you hold with, you know, shinai correctly, you are supposed to use these uh, two fingers, three fingers, right? Okay? There should be a space between your thumb and the index finger. So you can see that, uh, can you see it? The, the shinai, should be able to move because of the prey. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So if you can hold this one, when you go up, yeah, it's, when you go up, Shina is gonna come um, move towards you because of the space. So that's why I'm saying that don't do this, don't uh, bend your wrist towards you to do that. They be able to do it because of the correct grip. And the amount doesn't have to be big. It's like, as I said, 5, 10 degree. And that is why when you swing up, yeah, your hands should be pretty much straight up. Pretty much straight up. And that's why I say sometimes like, hey, when you swing up, you uh, swing up, 
Then make it like as if you are um, thrusting. You're seating. You know what I mean? Then shinai is gonna still tilt because of, of that uh, space. But your hands, you don't have to bend it, right? Instead, I want you to feel that your shinai is actually hitting your hands on this side. You know what I mean? Because of the space, right? So hitting it. I want you to feel it. Therefore, you swing up. And then when you swing down, you're going to use a, a wrist. Yeah. So you're going to uh, bend, actually, you're going to rotate forward, right? Or rotate down. And then at the same time, shinai from here, this amount. Yeah. So you're using the wrist and this space to create the good snap. Okay, makes sense? Yeah. So please think about it. Also, I mentioned about when you start singing down, then use the left hand and like dropping, right? Dropping the left hand like this way. Yeah. Now, uh, if you want to kind of understand how this works, if you have a bucket, let's say, and fill it up with the water, and let's say if you have some kind of a, um, like very flexible, you know, let's say like a clear or whatever, like the thin uh, plastic material, plastic sheet, for example. If you try to make this sink into that water, right? Does that make sense if you try to push it from the above and try to sink it so that this one can go all the way down into the water straight? It's very difficult to do, right? Yeah. Most of the time, I think once it touches the surface of the water, it's going to probably bend to the other side. So it's really difficult to keep it straight because of the resistance coming from the water. However, if you can pull from inside the water and pull this, you know, it doesn't matter how flexible this is, but if you can pull Inside, from the inside of water down to the water, don't you think you can keep it straight? Pretty easy. So if you, you know, you understand, right? Make sense? So the same way when you try to cut something, yeah? that's why it's not a good idea that if you kind of, you know, as if you are swinging from the above, like this. So this, if like it, now that's why I don't use the right hand don't push it from the above down to make a cut. But instead, especially if you see me in this way, you can see that, you know, as if my left hand goes inside the water. Yeah. Then from here, as if I am kind of pulling, of course, I need to push the tip forward, but you know what I mean? The motion works. You see? The hand is inside the water already. And that's why, um, you know, even though the katana is itself is very thin, you can keep a good hasuji and make a good cut. Does that make sense? There's something to think about it. So when you do the suburi, try to realize it. Then not, once again, this motion. This is pretty bad. But then from here. Then, so that's important. Okay, all right, okay. So, um, okay, so next one we're gonna do with standard. Okay, so I want to explain just one thing. Um, I think most of you are doing the standing, correct? Meaning you can start with your left foot and push your body forward. And then when you stamp it, you're gonna use a stamp so that you can quickly pull your left foot. So in order to understand this motion, um, Let's say you are going up stairs, okay? So if you are going up the stairs, and let's say you are putting your right foot first, uh, I mean, right foot first, okay? And then from here, you're gonna use the right foot and push it up like this. That's not how we do the Fumikomi, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you put your right foot and using the right foot, and okay, let's go. 
like that. If you are doing this, your fumikomi is gonna go look like, and then this. And over here, you don't feel like you're using the left foot. Okay, so if you are going upstairs in a fumikomi way, what you need to do is from here, then instead of lifting your right foot and putting it on that stair, you should use a left foot, foot and push up from here. Okay, so you don't have to really lift your right foot much, but using the left, then bring your body up, and as soon as your right foot goes up, then from here. Okay, so start from the left, and then bam, as soon as it goes, the right foot goes on that stair, you're gonna um, use the right foot so that you can bring the left foot up. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is how you should do the mikomi. Make sure that when you do the mikomi, start from the left, push, then bring your left foot in. Okay, so if you are having trouble understanding this motion, use steps and try to do the exercise I showed you. Now, instead of right foot and left foot from the left going up, and as soon as the right foot goes, you know, on that stair, push, and so that you can bring the left foot in immediately. Okay? All right. Okay, 